All right, guys, so today we are going to be reviewing Harmony, The Fall of Reverie. This is Don't Nod's brand new game, and uh, it's kind of similar to their other games in the way that the dialogue sounds. You'll definitely get the feeling of some of their old games, but it is something completely different to anything they've done before at the same time. It's more of a visual novel than anything. Obviously, Life is Strange was more of like a, a cinematic game. This is not really like that at all. It's, it's a visual novel with a branching story and uh, we're gonna kind of jump in and review it together here so basically in this game you will be on a journey to try and save your world and to try and find your mother basically that, that's the the gist of the game but let's jump in and review this properly using the seven P's method which is playing plot people places picture fun slash music and pop slash wow factor so let's jump in and start with the playing now obviously there's not much gameplay to be had in Harmony Fall of Reverie as it's a visual novel, but there's certainly decisions you'll have to make and it shows you these decisions on a big branching tree. So it'll show you what decisions you have made and what decisions you have upcoming. Now it can be a little bit confusing at times, especially at the start, getting used to this whole thing is just confusing uh, as there's crystals that you have to have for certain decisions and only certain paths you can take once you've made a decision that cuts other paths off. Even just saying that sounds confusing confusing but that's how it feels as well when you're playing the game you get crystals basically by picking certain decisions and um, that align with other aspirations and that will lead to you being able to do the quest or the part of the quest that aligns with them later on in the game so let's jump into the plot now obviously as i said not much to say in the gameplay section because uh, there's not much gameplay in, in this game now in the plot you start in your home world of brittle before waking up in a completely new dimension called reverie this is where you discover that both the worlds are on the verge of collapse, both Reverie and Brittle. And when you wake up, there's multiple aspirations around you trying to talk to you and who eventually will try and help you on your journey along the way. And the decisions that you do make in this game will align with certain aspirations more. Like in my game, personally, I was aligned with power most of the time and also bliss a little bit as well. So uh, obviously there's certain parts of, of each act or chapter that I aligned with the others as well but these were just the ones that I kind of uh, agreed with the most, I will say. But I can imagine the story being completely different if I decided to be more aligned with chaos, per se. Now, overall in this game, you are basically the oracle who is trying to lead the aspiration to a decision to decisions that help both worlds. You have to try and discover the new heart for the reverie world. And also in Brittle, you are trying to take down MK, who are this big mega corporation who have a foothold on on just basically making things a lot worse for people. Now, another part of this game is basically the whole first half of this game. You'll be searching for your mother, Ursula. Now, apparently she tried to do all this stuff before you. She was the Oracle before you, and she did it all without success. Now, uh, we she knew that we were the Oracle as well, based on the necklace that we wore, uh, that we found at the start of the game. That is a portal between worlds. That's how you're switching between the two worlds from time to time throughout this game. Um, and a lot Along your journey, you will get like a pop-up with a certain lore and text that I think is surprisingly deep and welcome. Like you can read into a lot more about the locations of each place that you're going to and the characters that you meet as well. Overall, I feel like there's the potential for a really interesting story here. And through the first three acts, of which there is five, I was really invested and I kind of wanted to see what was gonna happen. But then the final two acts came and it just really all fell a bit flat for me towards the end. One of the of the whole acts, like the start of act four, was just basically dealing with grief and waking up and doing mundane tasks, but it's really hard to get that point across in a visual novel with uh, pretty much limited emotions on the characters' faces animation-wise as well. And I feel like they also just overcomplicated a bit with the branching tree and crystals, and that just takes you out of the game far too often, because I did kind of like the idea in theory um, of having these crystals and trying to have the right amount to make these decisions uh, rather than just popping up during a conversation like life is strange but overall it didn't really work out in my opinion because it just 
took you out of the game far too often. Like you're in a conversation and then it, it takes you out of the conversation and takes you back to the branching tree where you have to make your decision then and kind of look over these things before getting back into the conversation. And that happens far too often to me that it takes you out of the conversation. It's hard to really get invested in it. But managing conversations in this game is important though. And uh, that was an aspect that I really did like. But one of the bigger problems to me as well with the story is that the big bad MK, who I mentioned earlier, who are this big mega corporation, this faceless organization, uh, that you never really see the consequences of what they do. So it's hard to empathize with the fallout of what they do as much. You never see any of the riots that are mentioned in the game. You never see any of the conditions of, of the people that uh, this has hurt really, um, because you don't see any of the characters that are a part of this revolution outside of the main characters and the main cast. And you just kind of get reference to them. So it's really hard to kind of get involved with MK and really hate them because it's just like, oh, they're bad, they do this, they do this, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. But it never actually shows you any of that. And I found that to be uh, really hard to kind of put into perspective. So I really never actually, I, f I just found it hard to empathize with the fallout of what they do as much, basically. So let's jump into the next P, which is the people. So we'll start with the main character, which is Polly slash Harmony. In Brittle, she's called Polly or Polly Hymnia. And in Reverie, she's referred to as Harmony. Now, I don't think I've even mentioned her yet, which is crazy considering she's the main character. And uh, I thought she was uh, she was an interesting character. She was a fun character. But yeah, she didn't really have like too much depth to her. You had the, the problems with her mother, her relationship problems with her mother and kind of... Uh, just overall the fact that she left the place when she was younger and she'd now come back to try and uh, help find her mother who had gone missing. Now, overall, I feel like that was about it. We didn't really get too much more in depth. She had her relationship with Yana, um, who we'll talk about a little bit later. Obviously, the aspirations are a big part of this game as well. You had bliss, you had power, you had truth, you had bond, you had chaos, and you had glory. Glory comes into the game a little bit later on, so her character wasn't quite as fleshed out. Chaos was basically like the joke uh, chaotic type um, character who was who was who was, had a little bit more depth to him than that, but overall was just trying to cause trouble for people. Bliss was an interesting character with a weird style. Power was the harsh voice of reason. Truth just obviously spoke the truth all the time. And Bond was kind of a little bit more in the middle. He'd agree with chaos sometimes and and just kind of overall just try and give you his perspective. Um, but the, the people characters were the characters that I related with the most. Now, Nora, our sister, was, uh, was a really interesting interesting character. I feel like she had good development. She was the favorite child, according to Polly, aka the main character. And uh, you see their relationship grow and kind of come back into the fray throughout this game, which I really liked. Now, there was Laszlo as well, who was my favorite character personally. He was basically our stepdad, I believe, or Ur Ursula's partner at the very least anyway. And uh, Ursula was obviously our mother, who we come across a little bit later in the game. But immediately to me, Ursula was completely unlikable. I said Laszlo was my favorite because he was just a, a really nice guy overall and tries to do the right thing. Our Ursula was just so selfish and just unlikable in the way that she came across. She didn't care about her daughter really or it seemed that way anyway at first. She doesn't care about anyone but herself and uh, her relationships with the aspirations. Uh, and she was having an open relationship with Laszlo, which made me like her even less when Laszlo was like, oh, she's not a she's not a one woman man or like you saw how much Laszlo loved her. And, and just I don't know, it's just overall. I mean, whatever works for people. OK, but just overall, I just really didn't like the, the character and uh, she, just really put me off or straight away and I never really came back around to liking her either. You had a Jade as well who was an activist. I feel like um, the characters in this game are probably the strongest point of it. There was a, a few really cool characters and uh, as you got in, I'd say Yana was probably one of the, the more likable characters and actually a potential love interest as well which I did go down that route and uh, went it, the love interest route with Yana and had that relationship there the lesbian relationship I guess or because their pronouns are they, which was really confusing actually in this game. This is why the, the they 
they pronouns kind of confuse me um, because the aspirations pronouns were also they and then her pronouns were they and it was all confusing and when it was like they 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 I was like I was like what the hell's going on because I always struggle with that one for some reason just because you know they obviously is in reference to multiple people generally so that's what confuses me about that one but that's a that's another conversation altogether I feel like the characters in this game were good but uh, quite a few of them could have been fleshed out more I would say um let's move on to the places though there's only really two places to discuss and that is reverie and brittle the two worlds now reverie they did so show some really cool cutscenes and an art style of that uh brittle not so much you saw a few different pictures downtown and stuff like that when you went out uh but overall you didn't really get a sense of what brittle was was like at all in the game which was kind of a shame because they were trying really hard to convey that in the messages that they were sending out about like how it was in ruins and they showed a few little pictures of tents out the back of where you're living and stuff but it really wasn't enough to really convey it um, and that was a problem that i had with it overall i think there was a cool art style there as well at the same time though. so next up is the picture slash performance i didn't have any performance issues and i was playing the majority of this game on steam deck i played maybe the first two hours or so on pc and then i switched over to steam deck until its completion the game took me roughly seven to eight hours to beat by the way i know a lot of people will be asking about that eight hours play time so if you're wondering how long it, it can take you to beat it can probably take longer if you're reading through stuff a little bit slower at times i was like clicking through stuff and reading really quickly um like i like to do sometimes i did the same thing with pentiment i just think this game falls short of a game like pentiment i think pentiment had much better uh build up to the to the end of the story much better fleshed out characters and uh, just overall a better game obviously this is a little bit of a different style as well as there's a lot more decision making in this game but um still the same concept i guess now let's get back to the picture slash performance which i was talking about before there is a cool art style in this game and the cutscenes. i really like that outside of the cutscenes, i wasn't so keen on the animations i feel like the silly animations of the characters kind of take me out of the story a little bit i got used to it after a little bit but it was weird looking at the at the screen say the characters are hugging and, and they were just standing there and they weren't hugging on the screen and they just had a blank look on their face it was like okay like uh, it just kind of took me out a little bit the music uh, was good i would say uh, nothing to write home about i think the music throughout the game was uh, was pretty well paced and well placed as well and um, the pop slash wow factor i don't think that there's anything really there so i think overall harmony the fall of reverie i could take it or leave it you know it's not my favorite game ever definitely and uh, it's not my favorite don't nod game ever i, I wouldn't put it on the on the same category as the first life is strange personally um but yeah I, I feel like there was just kind of a little bit of that woke slash cringe dialogue that that pertained to life is strange 2 and beyond with don't nods games i didn't really feel as much in life is strange there was still obviously those elements of the game there but it wasn't as like for it didn't feel as forced uh is what i'll say there was a lot of kind of things in this game where they were trying to trying to make a statement i feel like and that kind of stuff just takes you out of of the of the story a little bit at times i feel like but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed it please do drop a like on this review if you want to see me review more games going forward thank you for all the support on the channel recently really appreciate it make sure to drop a like as i said and i'll see you guys for upcoming games it's a, a busy few months ahead until the end of the year man uh, summer games fest revealed a whole lot of new games and i'm excited to dive in to all of these games coming up until the end of the year and i'll be reviewing and doing playthroughs of a lot of them so stay tuned to the second channel make sure to subscribe and i'll see you next time peace out